टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट सार्बेन्स ऑक्सली एक्ट गाइस इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस एंड यू आर वाचिंग दिस लाइव फील फ्री टू आस्क द क्वेश्चंस इन द चैट विंडो व्हाट इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ सार्बेन्स ऑक्सली एक्ट व्हाट आर द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ सार्बेन्स ऑक्सली एक्ट वी विल अंडरस्टैंड इन टुडेस वीडियो आई हैव प्रिपेयर्ड सम स्लाइड्स सम नोट्स that i want to walk you through very important from an understanding point of view so let us get started so the sarbanes oxley act also known as commonly known as sox it's basically nothing but a federal law that sets the requirements for all public companies to protect investors from fraudulent financial reporting okay so why this bill was passed in 2002 this bill was passed in order to make sure that there are no more financial scandals market manipulations which were happening before guys so because of these financial disasters in order to control them and in order to build up the investor trust and consumer confidence sarbanes oxley act had to be introduced okay so that nothing of this sort like financial frauds can happen again the us government passed the sarbanes oxley act of 2002 now who monitors the sox activities guys who monitors the sox since oxley act act is monitored by us securities and exchange commission also known as sec and it impacts two types of sectors in any organization number 1 is the financial domain and the number 2 is the it domain the it function of any organization so how does it works in order to work it basically lays out the rules regarding financial reporting and what kind of rules are there it asks you to implement some internal controls like regular audits and it asks to strengthen the corporate governance as well and it is applicable to all the public companies in the us so you can note note down this point it is applicable to all companies in the us and foreign companies or subsidiaries that do business in the us which means that if you are working from india or from any location in asia for that matter and the company parent company for which you are working is based in us then socks applies to you as well okay so it is applicable to all the public companies in the us and foreign companies or subsidiaries that do business in the us so socks is a critical part of today's grc landscape guys that's why we are studying it okay now what are the main sectors where socks audit reports are utilized and looked for okay publicly traded companies wholly owned subsidiaries of publicly traded companies non us based publicly traded companies and private companies which are preparing to go public also known as ipos now what will happen if there is any non compliance with sox what will happen somebody can ask that okay there has been an act but what happens if it do not comply with it so if any organization is found under non compliance with the mandates as laid out by the sox they will face fines and and or imprison, imprisonment as well it can also result in reputational damage and in some cases the collapse of the entire firm as well the us government as you can already see by now by the discussion is very strict about compliance and it is an organization's best interest to adhere to the sox compliance rules okay so what are the benefits of sox compliance now let us try to understand we have learned about the act we have learned about the non compliance 
But what about the benefits? So SOGS places the responsibility on management, your management, your organization management, accountants and auditors to accurately report their financials. Okay. And that is the whole purpose. Okay. There should be no failures in compliance. Although SOX does not spell out how to maintain records, it details the controls required for accurate financial reporting, giving GRC professionals an important role in the process. Section 404 of SOX requires management to establish and maintain an adequate internal control structure and procedures for financial reporting. Okay. Self understood, I think. A mandatory annual independent audit, which means that every year you have to go for independent audit, attests to the soundness of management's assessment of their controls and reports on the effectiveness of the overall financial controls and procedures. Okay. And what will happen as part of this audit process? As part of this audit process, companies must document what all internal controls they have for financial reporting, also known as ICFR, which will be serving as a proof of their compliance with the SOX objectives, including details of all the business processes that they are using, as well as the details of internal controls that they have, along with the risks that they have identified during this process. And in addition to oversight of financial reporting, SOX also requires firms to have strong data governance. This is very important. So I wanted to mention it here. Strong data governance also is there, guys. Okay. So it's not only about financial reporting. It's about data governance as well. And security policies as well for financial data. Okay. So the aspect is covering financial data only, but covering all the parts related to or associated with the financial data. So there has been a change since the time SOX Act has passed and many companies have benefited out of this act and it has motivated companies to employ stronger controls and better documentation and greater standardization protecting both themselves and their investors. So I think this was a very brief introduction about SOX. What is SOX all about? So somebody now if asks you what is SOX all about, you can at least give an answer by stating that this is what SOX compliance stands for. Okay. Now in the upcoming videos, we will also see about SOC 1, SOC 2 and type 1, type 2 reports as well. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.